Okay, scholars, I am so sorry. I am not here today, but I still want to have the workshop with you um, that I had with other groups as we did our station rotation. So what we did at this station was we took a look at the rubric from last class that went through what you would need to include to get a four on this learning objective. And then we looked at a student example down here. So I want us to look at what the learning objective was asking. It's asking for you to prove that you can explain how different primary and secondary sources tell different histories. And it says to get a four, the student is able to give specific examples of primary and secondary sources. The student is able to explain how different sources give different stories. And the student is able to give specific examples of sources telling different stories by explaining the source and main ideas of several documents. And so in order to get to four, there's quite a lot you need to include. So let's take a look at what this student wrote. This student said, I believe I am at a four because while doing the Christopher Columbus source analysis, I was able to tell which source was reliable by looking to see if the date was at the time that Columbus was alive who the author was, and if he had any connection to Columbus or the time period, or if the source cited reliable primary sources. Now, this is a great sentence, and it talks a lot about reliability. It talks a lot about looking at the author. But does it do anything that the rubric is asking? So one thing I'm noticing with this is it's not telling me what a primary or secondary source is or giving me specific examples. And it's not going into the details of how different sources tell different stories. So let's keep reading and see if they do more. So we start right here. It says, this shows that I am proficient in finding reliable primary and secondary sources. During the lunchroom fight activity, I was able to understand who the most reliable witness to, of the fight were, or reliable witnesses of the fight were, and why they might be biased. Some people might lie to defend Max due to the fact that they don't like Justin because his parents fired someone they know. This shows that I'm effectively able, that I'm able to effectively evaluate the credibility of primary sources. Now I want us to go back here. This student does a really good job of explaining why some sources might be more credible than others, but does the rubric ask you to do that? Remember, the rubric is asking you to do basically three main things, four main things, four main things. Tell us what primary and secondary sources are and give examples of a primary and a secondary source. So you're gonna to need to name some specific sources that you've interacted with that are primary and secondary. It asks you to explain and give specific examples of sources telling different stories about a particular event. And it asks you to identify the main ideas of those sources and use those sources as specific examples. So you're gonna need three to four specific sources listed. That doesn't mean you have to quote them all, but it does mean that the names of the sources and a brief summary of the sources needs to be included in your reflections. And by brief summary, I mean it could be a phrase or a sentence that tells us the main idea of the source. It doesn't need to be a whole paragraph. But you do need to include multiple sources in your reflection in order to show you've reached a four because a four is asking you to be able to prove you can do something complex and just saying that you can do something complex is not enough we must always look for evidence that proves what can be done or what has been said and so it is important for you to include examples of these sources from the work that we've done to show where you are at what I saw with every student and what I see with this example is that you are all excellent writers, just absolutely outstanding. And every reflection was very thoughtful in how it thought about the activities we were doing. It thought about bias and credibility. But what almost every reflection missed was that this rubric was not asking about credibility or reliability. It was asking for something slightly different, being able to explain and give examples of primary and secondary sources and be able to explain and give examples of how different sources can tell different stories about the same event. Hopefully this information will help you go back and revise the work that you've done. Please remember that in my class, you can always, 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 always revise your work to increase your score on it. My goal is that you become an expert. 
that you exceed expectations at all times. And in order to do that, it means that sometimes you will have to try again. And I will give you every opportunity I can to try again, and I will give you feedback. So when you go onto Google Classroom and you open FW2, Reflection FW2 is the name of the assignment, you should see comments from me on the assignment if you turned it in. Those comments might include sentence frames or guiding questions to help you improve upon your reflection. You can also use what I went over in the video to help you improve upon your reflection. Make some changes, revise, turn it back in. If you're still not at a four, I will give you some feedback and you'll be able to try again. If you have specific questions for me, send me an email. You are awesome.